Well, hello, everybody. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why doesn't God heal my body today? I prayed and had faith, and yet the healing has not happened today and right now. Well, let's talk about that. Why not today? Why is the blessing and the healing not happening today? Turn your Bibles to Mark, the first chapter. We're going to look at the 29th through 34th verse in the New International Version. You see, it teaches us where Jesus heals many. Keep that word in mind, many. Here's what it says. As soon as they left the synagogue, they, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Now, Simon's mother-in-law, verse 30, was in bed with a fever, a serious fever. And they immediately told Jesus about her. They thought she was probably dying. So he went to her took her hand and helped her up. And the Bible says that the fever left her immediately that day and she began to wait on them or serve them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. Everybody started coming to Jesus. And the text says in verse 33, the whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed, watch the word, many who had various diseases. So that's our scripture reading, Mark 1, 29 through 34, that we're going to talk about. Listen, the whole town gathered at the door, the text says, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases, verse 33 through 34. And here, here's the context. While, while still in Capernaum, Jesus and his four new disciples visited Simon Peter's mother-in-law, a house who was sick in bed with a fever. And Jesus miraculously raised her up and cured her that day. Now, what's equally important to Mark is the fact that he tells a story, but also what she does afterwards. She serves Jesus as a result. What am I saying? The only appropriate response to God's goodness in your life is in fact gratitude and service. After he heals you, you're responsible to serve him and to thank him. When news got out about Jesus' ability to heal, people, people began bringing all of their sick, all of their demon-possessed loved ones to Jesus. And the text says that after the sun had set, in verse 32, the Sabbath was now over, people had the freedom to, to, to bring their burdens to the Lord, people who were sick and relatives. He miraculously, the text says, healed not everybody, but the word is many. And many that were sick, he drove out many demons. Not all, but the word is many. You know, in a conversation about Jesus' miracles, someone asked me this question. If Jesus healed many who had various diseases, and if Jesus is the same yesterday, and today it will be forevermore. Why should we not expect him to heal us today? Good question. And, and then they came up with this, this song. Doesn't Psalm 103 says that the Lord forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases? Oh boy, created a conflict for me. Some people have said that, but that, that perhaps Jesus doesn't always heal because people do not always have enough faith. I don't believe that. That idea has upset many faith-filled Christians who have prayed and prayed for physical healing for someone they loved, and yet there was no healing. They had the faith. God had the power. Or could it be, as some others have said, that, that the time for miracle healings has passed? Some people believe that. That's first century stuff. That's not 21st century, 22nd century stuff. Well, well neither of these ideas make sense to me. Miraculous healing still happens today, I believe, and some people have, have, have seen healings right before their very eyes, even today. And the truth is, we don't know why some people are healed and others are not. We don't know why. But it does not have to do with the lack of faith. I can tell you that right now. It may have to do with God's will at the time. You know, during Jesus' ministry on earth, Jesus did not heal everyone, but many. And he did not promise, in fact, physical healing 
for all who ask anyway. Read Paul's experience in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, 7 through 10. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He prayed three times. He had faith. God did not heal him of the thorn in the flesh. But here is what Paul heard God say. Paul said, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. God is up to something. You know, Jesus doesn't promise to give uh, everybody uh, everything that they want, you know, enough strength, you know. But he does say in uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, Come unto me, all ye who are labor and are heavy laden. And what I would do is I may not give you all the healing you want, but I will give you rest. Sometimes God is not going to heal physically. Other times he's going to heal physically, but he's not going to do it right that day. He has your healing down the road, and all you have to do is get into your faith vehicle and drive down the road, and you will see that he had your healing already. That healing of diabetes is already in the making. The healing of high blood pressure is already there. The healing of heart conditions is already uh, there all kinds of diseases that you're going through, struggles. Your healing is already there, and all you have to do is wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart for right now, but then the miracle is going to show up. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed the lesson today. Y'all have a great day.